Hello friends, hope you're doing well. Thanks for stopping by today. And this video is one I've been kind of hinting at making for a while and I've had a lot of people say, yes, please do that. And that is essentially a beginner's guide to using the Curves tool. I'll be in Luminar Neo today, but the Curves tool is in pretty much every editing app. So whether you use Lightroom or On One or Photoshop or of course Luminar Neo, the Curves tool essentially operates the same. And I'm gonna walk through, again, this is from a beginner's perspective. And so this will be showing you how it works, some things to think about, and just kind of basically a, a demonstration of the power of the Curves tool because it's incredibly powerful and it does a lot for you. Primarily it does stuff around light and color, but I think that it's a little bit intimidating, especially if you're a beginner. But um, overall, honestly, once you kind of play around with it, you'll figure out that, oh, this is a really powerful tool. I could use this and um, you're not gonna break anything if you don't like what you get. You just reset and start over. So let's get into it. I've got a raw file here, completely unedited. It's kind of dark and contrasty. It's kind of colorful. And that's why I chose this photo because it gives you a really, uh, it, it's very easy to see what curves can do to a photo like this. Again, it won't be an edit, but it'll be a demonstration of the tool. Now, Curves is here in Develop Raw within Luminar Neo. So click on Curves. You can see that you've got four different uh, dots, one that's kind of gray, and that's the one that I'm on because it has a circle in it. And then there's a red one, and you can see a red line there, green one with a green line, and blue with a blue line. I'm gonna start on the, the gray one. You will also notice in the background, there is a histogram. And hey, guess what? It kind of looks like the histogram here. And that's because it is mirroring the histogram. Now these four different sections, this gray one is the light values or the tone curve uh, as people call it. Whereas the red is the red color spectrum, if you will. The green is the green and the blue is the blue. So it gives you the power and control over the light, as I said, which would be this section primarily, but also over different colors. And we'll talk about the colors in a second. Now the histogram up here, as I said, they kind of mirror each other, but this one you can see has got all kinds of different sort of colors on it. You can see a red and a green and a blue. But if you click it once, you can see uh, each time you click it that it changes. And so it defaults to that. But if I click on red, if I look here and look at red, you can see that histogram pretty much mirrors it. If I click it again, it goes to green. So if I click over here on green, the green histogram uh, kind of mirrors that. And one more time, blue. And if I click on blue, you can see that uh, essentially mirrors that histogram. And then I click one more time on the real histogram that goes back to gray, which is this tone curve. And if I click it the last time, I go back to the combined one. So I'm not gonna spend any more time on the histogram up top, but I did wanna point out that the different color channels in the curves tool are kind of mirroring what's happening with the histogram up above. It's showing you the distribution of that color in the image. So there's a few different things to be aware of. This upper right section is really about the highlights and the lower left section is really about the midtones. It's the same with these three dots on this line. The far left one is the dark stuff, right? That is the shadow area. And the bottom, or excuse me, yeah, the, the right corner or the farthest right dot is about the highlights. And the one in the middle is about the midtones. Now, the cool thing is these uh, dots, if you will, can be moved. And also these dots can be moved that are on this line. Uh, you can also move all the dots here on the different lines on the different color channels. And again, we'll get to that in a minute. In addition, you can place additional dots here and start moving things around and it gives you a lot of control over the tones in the image. And so uh, first thing I wanna do is show you, this is shadows, right? So if I start lifting the shadows, the shadows are getting lighter, but I'm getting a faded look to the photo because the shadows um, are getting lighter, which means I'm losing contrast. So when you see a faded sort of vintage look, that is often how that's done. Separately, if I drag this to the right along the bottom, the shadows are getting darker and deeper. And by the way, you'll notice the color looks more intense. I haven't touched color. And that's why I say often in my videos that if you're impacting contrast in an image, which is what I'm doing here, you're also gonna have an impact on how the color looks. So that's why I often talk about doing light work before I do color work in an edit. The other thing about dragging these shadows and getting them deeper and darker is um, obviously it's impacting the, the colors in the sky, but it's also creating a silhouette. So when you see a silhouette, it's often because the shadows are so dark and deep, which can be done here in curves. So I'm gonna reset that and just hit that to make sure I got it all. Um, I'm gonna start over here on the highlights. Now, if I drag that to the left, the highlights are getting brighter. 
And you know, eventually I can just get it completely blown out, which of course would look terrible, but that gives you the ability to control and basically brighten parts of the image. Like that doesn't look so bad, um, and I haven't really done anything except move the highlights. Conversely, if I drag them this way, the highlights are getting darker, which means, of course, the rest of the image is going to get flatter and flatter and darker and darker because I'm losing that contrast of the bright part and the dark part. In addition to that, as I play with this slider here, I can take that to the left. So the bottom slider, you can take the highlights to the left like that, which you can see is that dot up here is doing the same thing. So that does that, but you can't bring this dot down except by grabbing the dot. You can't do it with this line. And same with the shadows. You can take this left uh, dot to the right to create that higher contrast, which is, as you can see, moving that slider and the shadows to the right as well. But I can't, I, I can only move it up by uh, grabbing that dot. I can't do it with a line down below. Now, a popular thing to do is to drop a, what I call an anchor point or a control point there and there because that's basically kind of anchoring uh, a section of the uh, of the tone curve. And so what people often do is drop a point there and they'll lift that slightly. It slightly brightens some of the, the bright spots because I'm uh, mid-tones would be the center section. I'm kind of the edge, kind of heading toward the highlights. So I'm not really brightening the highlights entirely. I'm just kind of brightening the mid-tones. And then a lot of people will take this uh, little anchor point here and drag it down and that's going to darken some of the deeper darker mid-tones so all it does is create a little bit of contrast in the, in the image so if you look at the before and the after you can see the colors look a little bit richer and it's a little bit more contrasty but not that much that is called an s curve because it's a little bit shaped like an s that is a way to control the light and that's a very popular use of a tone curve now i'm going to reset that um, also what is really effective is also just if you want to brighten the exposure a little bit is just taking that mid-tone slider and going a little bit left because it does lift the mid-tones and mid-tones are really prevalent in a lot of images, right? So you're going to have, generally speaking, and you can see in the tone curve, there's a lot of stuff in the, in the middle. So you can lighten an image pretty well by just moving that middle line, impacting the mid-tones, or the opposite is true, right? You can create a little bit higher contrast, a little bit richer contrasty image, which again pops colors by moving the midtones uh, slider here to the right, which is kind of dropping those midtones. Um, and again, because there's so much midtones in an image, you're impacting the entire photo. Now, the other thing you can do, you'll notice if you start moving these midtones like that, you will see that also these these highlight areas start to get impacted. So something you can do is possibly like drop a couple of anchor points here and maybe even drop a couple there in the deeper darker shadow areas and then go and move this line and you'll see you don't have quite the same impact on the overall midtones and in fact you could just grab this center section and pull that up a little bit to slightly brighten some of the midtones whereas you're keeping by dropping these anchor points you're keeping uh, keeping that part of the line from moving too much so the thing to do would be to really just control the overall look of the image by dropping anchor points uh, in areas that you want to keep uh, still, for lack of a better word. Maybe I don't want a whole lot of shadow. Maybe I want to lift a little bit of midtones, maybe a little bit of highlights, and maybe a little bit of those higher midtones and just get a little bit of an impact. Whereas if I just start dragging the midtone slider and don't drop these anchor points, I end up moving the entire line, the entire tone curve. Whereas here, I'm just impacting a little bit of it because I dropped these other anchor points to kind of anchor it or keep that line a little bit more still. And you can see here before and after, I've had a pretty good impact overall on the look of the image by just moving a little bit of these. And so I think you can drop 10 of these. Uh, and if you ever wanna get rid of them, you just double click and it will reset you back to zero on that particular point that you drop. So if you have seven or eight points and one of them gets kind of messed up, just double click it to get rid of it. And of course you can always uh, hit that to reset the entire tone curve. So now the same thing is true of all these different color uh, sections of the tone curve, right? You've got red, you've got green, and you've got blue. And for me, one of the things I like to do is just come in with midtones and just say, all right, I wanna lift the red and the midtones simply because there's often a lot of midtones again, and that's gonna create a warmer image. And as I go further and further, you're gonna see it's gonna impact more and more of the image. Maybe I don't wanna impact it that much. Maybe I just want it in a little bit of the brighter areas so I could drop points here to kind of hold that in place 
and then maybe try to lift it just a little bit in some of the highlight areas and maybe a tiny bit in some of these mid-tone areas but not as much in the shadow and you can see that you can have a huge impact on the colors and control the impact in terms of specific tonal areas by dropping these anchor points and moving things around so there it is before and there it is now now the opposite is true with red uh, is if you go to the right you're going to get a little bit more of this cyan color so as i start to drag this and i'm just doing this kind of broadly with the entire curve coming i'm starting to get more cyan in the photo well there's a uh, a color wheel that comes into play here and this is something to think about and that's this color wheel so the opposite of red is cyan and so as i'm moving away from red on this red tone curve section i'm getting more toward the cyan but the same is true for green and blue uh, on the green one when we get to that and when i move away from it i'm getting to magenta and on the blue one when we get to that as i move away from blue i'm getting more toward yellow so let me go back here and reset this and so same kind of thing maybe i want to drop uh, some control points just to be very specific and targeted with my edits and maybe for some reason i want a little bit more in the you know the higher end of the highlights and in the highlights themselves maybe i want them to be a bit more red but maybe I'm going for a little bit of a bi-color kind of toning look. And so maybe down in the shadow areas, I want a little bit more cyan or blue. I can do that. And that's what I'm getting. You can see how I'm kind of splitting those tones. Uh, it's, it's called bi-color toning, where you can kind of get two different kind of tonal looks in an image. But that makes kind of an interesting look. So there it is before, and there it is now. And so that's a way to control the colors. And by the way, you can also do something here on Tone Curve to adjust the tones and then come in and do something on red and also on green and on blue. So you can adjust all four of these different things independently if you would like to. Okay, now with green, remember the opposite of green is magenta. And so if I want to go to the left here, I'm going to get more green in the image. And again, I'm just playing with the midtones, but if I go to the right, I get more magenta. And so this might be another situation where you perhaps want more magenta in the sky and not so much in some of the other areas. Well, you can just come in here and drop anchor points to keep it from moving and then maybe perhaps drop the, uh, the amount or drop these anchor points up here where you're pulling down and a little bit more of the highlights and creating more of that magenta look. Something I like to do with my sunsets is, uh, and sometimes golden hour and even blue hour, is add a little bit of magenta simply because I like that kind of color look. But you can see there it is before and there it is after. Most of the impact is in the sky because I have these anchor points kind of holding that steady. So it's not becoming magenta in these darker shadow areas down below. It's mostly just becoming magenta in the highlight areas. So that's how you can control that. And then same blue. Remember the opposite of blue is yellow. You can see the blue and the yellow here. Those are opposite on the color wheel. So once again, so if I take this mid-tone slider drag it to the left I'm getting more blue and it's across the mid-tone so that's the uh, impacting a lot of the photo including some of these areas that are in shadow and of course the opposite is true if I start dragging it to the right I get a lot more warmth or yellow in the image well for me maybe I like uh, that kind of bluish in the um, highlight areas so I want to anchor those shadow areas and maybe I just want to start dragging more of this to get a little bit more blue up there in those kind of brighter areas of the photo maybe something about like that and if you look at the before and the after not a massive change but i'm impacting the blue and again you can couple this with similar moves on these other tone curve tabs if you will the, the red and the green and so you can really mix and match and get a lot of control over your color by using all these things individually and kind of stacking it i just recommend that you're careful and also perhaps look at the histogram that's being represented here in the background. So that's an overview of how curves work. You basically have a tone curve tab, which is the overall tones in the image. And then you've got a tab for each color with a histogram that essentially shows you the color, the distribution of color in that area of, of the image. So you can see in this case, there's a lot of blue in the midtones and there's some in the shadows based on the histogram. And by using these different anchor points, you can control where the edits are going in your photo. So this really just gives you a ton of control over your image overall both in terms of the tonal values and also the colors and so what i typically do is when i'm using curves i will generally start up here and light and do some things with contrast highlights and shadows maybe a little bit of blacks and whites and then if you want to control the colors you can come in here and do that with curves as well as further refining the overall tonal values 
and then it might pop down to sharpen, do some white balance, saturation, vibrance, whatever it might be. But in this case, I wanted to just dive into the curves specifically, show you how that works and give you some tips as well as hints about how to use that in your own images. Hope this has helped you out. Um, if you're looking for these kind of things, I do have a newsletter I send out. You can check that out at the link down below. You also get a free preset pack for Luminar Neo, which has 10 presets in it by joining my newsletter. And I send out these kinds of tips and tricks every week or two. And if that's interesting to you, check that out. And if not, thanks for watching the video. I hope it's giving you some ideas about how this works. I'll be back soon with more. Thanks, my friends. I appreciate you guys. Take care. I'll see you soon. And until then, adios.